Hello and welcome to English for Arabs. English for Arabs is English for all. Unit 14, Part 2. Words of Unit 14, Part 2. Words of Exercise Number 7. A camera operator. British operator. American, a camera operator. A person who handles the camera during film. A film editor. Someone who chooses and edits the scenes in a film. Newscaster. Newscaster. Someone who reads out the rivers on television or radio news program. A gossip columnist. A person who writes news about famous people. A network installer. A person who puts in hardware and software. Photo editor. Photo, American photo, British photo. A photo editor, a person who chooses photos for a newspaper or magazine. Stunt person, stunt person, a person who does the actions in a film. A support technician, a person who helps with software questions and problems. Sitcom, a situation comedy. Editorial, an article in a newspaper that expresses the editor's opinion. Composer, a person who writes music. Words of exercise number eight. Location scout, location scout, a person who finds appropriate places to shoot scenes. Gets to travel all over the world. Casting director. Casting director is someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie. Casting director is, a, is someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie. Prop designer. Prop designer. American who can make O as a sound. Prop. Prop designer. A person who creates the objects that the character use. A person who creates the objects that character use. That the character use. Again, prop designer. A person who creates the objects that, that the character use. Screenwriter. A person who develops a story idea into a full movie script. Screenwriter. A person who develops a story idea into a full movie script. Dialect coach, dialect coach, a person is language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A person who is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. Script doctor, script doctor, a person who is used when original screenplay needs more work, jokes, funnier and dialogues more realistic. A person who is used when original screenplay needs more work, jocks, American, jocks, funnier and dialogues more realistic. 10. Words of exercise number 10. Scandal. An action that causes shock and disapproval. Fabulous. Very good. Excellent. 12. Deserted. 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 In American, deserted. Having no people. Shelter. Housing. Protection from the weather. Spooky. Frightening. Eerie. Defenseless. Helpless. With no power. Elaborate song and dance number. Elaborate song and dance number. Long fancy entertainment routine. Pack into, enter a crowded place, last, melodramatic, exaggerated with strong feelings, melodramatic, exaggerated with strong feelings, flashy, expensive and showy, Twirl around, 
spend dancing circles, triumphs, beats, wins over, bad guy, beloved, appreciated with strong affection, appreciated with strong affection. Unit 14 Exercise number 7 Lord Power Media Professions A. What kind of jobs are these? Complete the chart with the compound nouns. So in this exercise, we talk about media professions. Professions, jobs, such as film jobs, publishing jobs, TV shops, computer jobs. And the TV, publishing, films, all of these are kinds of media. What kind of jobs are these? Complete the chart with the compound nouns. What's the compound noun? Compound noun, we said is a noun plus another noun. We're going to have a compound noun. Like computer, one word. Plus programmer, another word. We're going to have a new word. Computer programmer. So, where can we put these jobs? Computer programmer. A programmer is someone who makes programs. Editorial director. This is the director of editorial. What's an editorial? Editorial is an article which is written in newspaper. By the director. Film composer. Composer. Network installer, a network, network, a group of computers. Newscaster, newscaster, someone who reads the news on a television program or the radio. Page designer, someone who designed a page, maybe this page in a newspaper or maybe it's on the internet to design a page on the internet like website designer, photo editor, movie extra, sitcom writer. What's a sitcom? Sitcom? A comedy situation, a comic situation. Software designer, someone who designs the programs. Stunt person. This is the person who does the most dangerous actions instead of the actor or the actress. Talk show host. Talk show host, talk show interviewer. He's the person who asks actors, actresses, singers, famous people and politicians a lot of questions. Now, which of these jobs related to film jobs, publishing jobs, TV jobs, computer jobs, film jobs, film composer, movie extra, stunt person, publishing jobs, editorial director, page designer, photo editor, TV jobs, newscaster, sitcom writer, Talk show host, computer jobs, computer programmer, computer programmer, network installer, software designer. B. Group work. Choose for jobs from party and describe what they do. Example. A computer programmer writes the instruction that direct computers to You can here choose any job from part A and make a sentence or about any job like a camera operator. A camera operator handles the camera during the filming of a movie. A camera operator handles the camera during the filming of a movie. Page 95, Exercise 8, Perspectives. Quiz Show, Part A. Listen to a quiz show. Can you guess the occupations? 
Casting Director Location Scout Screenwriter Dialect Coach Prop Designer Script Doctor One, a blank who finds appropriate places to shoot scenes gets to travel all over the world. Two, a blank is someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie. Three, a blank who makes sure that everything on a movie set looks realistic, creates the objects that the characters use. Four, a blank is someone who develops and expands a story idea into a full movie script. Five, a blank is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. Six, a blank who is used when an original screenplay needs more work, makes jokes funnier, and dialogues more realistic. So here, let's get the occupation. The occupations, the jobs. A, a location scout. A location scout who finds appropriate places to shoot scenes gets to travel all over the world. Two, a casting director. A casting director is someone who chooses an actor for each part in a movie. Three, a prop designer. A prop designer who makes sure that everything on a movie set looks realistic create the objects, create the objects that the, that the character use. 4. A screenwriter. A screenwriter is someone who develops and expands story idea into a full movie script. A dialect coach. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. 6. A script doctor. A script doctor is used when original screenplay needs more work, makes jokes funnier, and dialogues more realistic. So the answers: one, a location scout; two, casting director; three, prop designer; four, screenwriter. Five, dialect coach. Six, script doctor. B. Which of the jobs in party do you think would be the most interesting? Why? Tell the class. So this is of course your opinion. You choose what is the best job and the most interesting job for you. Exercise number nine. Pronunciation. Page 95, Exercise 9, Pronunciation. Review of stress in compound nouns. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how the first word in a compound noun usually receives greater stress. Newscaster Photo Editor Movie Extra Sitcom Writer Stunt Person Newscaster Photo Editor Movie Extra Sitcom Writer Stunt Person Pronunciation Phonetics Review of Stress in Compound Nouns What's stress? Stress is to make the sound higher, 
longer and louder. A compound noun is a noun which is made of two words, two nouns, like newscaster. Newscaster. So we found here that the stress is on the first part. And we make the sound higher, louder, and longer on the first part. Newscaster. Photo editor. Movie extra. Setcom writer. Stunt person. So we stress here on the first word. Practice the sentence in exercise 8. Pay attention to the word stress in the compound nouns. And now, let's have the grammar focus, exercise 10. Page 96, exercise 10, grammar focus. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist that works with actors on their accents. Non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. Let's have this wonderful explanation with Mr. Kyle, with Mr. Kyle Ralphson. Okay, so after listening to that conversation, let's look at our grammar. And our grammar today is looking at something called relative clauses. Relative clauses. So what are relative clauses? Well, relative clauses give more information about the words that they follow. And they begin with relative pronouns. So. Let's look at what relative pronouns are. Relative pronouns are words like who, and we use that to give extra information about people that we are talking about, or that, and that is kind of flexible because we can use it to give extra information about people or things, right? But there's, a, there's an exception with this one, so let's be careful. But we also use which to give extra information about things or objects, okay? So if we remember this conversation at the party, right? Monica says, hey, which guy is Peter? Which guy is Peter? And the guy replies, he says, Peter is the guy who is dancing, okay? So this is what we're going to look at today, this type of information. Who is dancing? That's giving extra information about the word guy. It comes immediately after the word guy, and it's describing more information about which guy, right? So this is an example of a relative clause. Now, we have different types of relative clauses, okay? We have defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. So, defining relative clauses give essential information to define a word. So, if you ever ask yourself which one, and you give extra information to describe and define which one, that's a defining relative clause, because we define which one are we talking about. The other type we have is a non-defining relative clause. And basically, these give extra information about a word, but does not define the word, okay? So they're very different. This one's telling me which one specifically, defining relative clauses, and this one is just giving me extra information. It's not defining. So let's look at some examples of these. So let's look at specifically the defining relative clause. And remember, these give essential information to define which one are we talking about. So if we remember, she said, who is that guy over there? But we had one, two, three different guys. So he's going to say, um, well, which one? 
Okay? So whatever information she's going to give is going to describe specifically which one, so she's defining it. And she's going to say something like this. I'm talking about the guy who is dancing, or I'm talking about the guy that is dancing. Okay? So if we look at this, right, if I look at the word guy and I say I'm talking about the guy, again, he's thinking which one? Which guy are you talking about? So the information after the word guy is going to define him. It's going to, de it's the defining information about him, right? So if I say I'm talking about the guy who is dancing or that is dancing, this is a defining relative clause. This information is defining the word guy. Again, that information is defining which guy. There are many guys, right? Good. Now let's talk about what we're doing here. I can use who, right, because it's a person. I'm talking about a guy. And we said who is for people, so that's okay. And we can use that, right, because that is for people or for things. And this is a person, so I can use that. But let's be careful. Let's look at this. That only used in defining relative clauses. So I can only use that if it's a defining relative clause. And it is a defining relative clause. Now if it's a non-defining relative clause, I cannot use that. So let's look at an example of this. Okay, so remember, the non-defining relative clauses give extra information about a word but does not define the word. So we know that this is Peter now. She knows that this is Peter, he obviously knows this is Peter, and they are talking about Peter. So she says, oh, okay, so that's Peter. I remember you told me about him, right? So now he wants to give some extra information about Peter. So he can say, Peter, who loves to dance, is dating the girl in the green sweater. And this is what an example of a non-defining relative clause is, right? If we think about this, Peter is a person that both of them now know. That we're not thinking to ourselves, which Peter are you talking about? So when we talk about Peter, we're just going to give extra information about Peter. And that's what the non-defining relative clauses do. They give extra information about something that we just talked about. Okay? So this information is not defining Peter. We understand who Peter is. It's just giving extra information. And for that reason, it's a non-defining relative clause. Okay? Now, the other thing we can think about is that when I use a non-defining relative clause, I always separate it from the other part of the sentence with commas. So these are commas. So that's one way of identifying a non-defining relative clause is when you have commas. Okay? Now, the other thing we need to think about is that we said that, well, that can be used for people. But in this context, I cannot use that. Why? Because this is a non-defining relative clause. And that is only used in the defining relative clauses. So I cannot use that in this situation because I'm only giving extra information about Peter. I am not defining who Peter is. Okay. Okay, so let's do some extra practice, okay? So we're going to talk about this girl. If we remember, her name was Kim, and they were talking about her. So I want you to look at this sentence, and I want you to decide if this is a defining or a non-defining relative clause that we see here. So it says, she is from Seoul, Korea, which is the place where Monica lived. Okay, so is this defining or non-defining? Okay, if you said non-defining relative clause, you're correct. Now let's look at why. Now I'm going to cover this up and let's see what it says. She's from Seoul, Korea. Okay, if I just think of the word Seoul, Korea, I understand which one you're talking about. There's only one Seoul, Korea. So I don't need to define what is Seoul, Korea, where is Seoul, Korea, which Seoul, Korea are we talking about. No, it's understood. So I'm just going to give extra information about that. So if it's extra information, 
Remember, that's a non-defining relative clause. So, that's why this is non-defining. Now, let's look at another reason. She's from Seoul, Korea, which is the place where Monica lived. I'm using a comma. And remember that with non-defining relative clauses, we use that comma to separate it from the other part of the sentence. Okay? A good way to think about non-defining relative clauses is to think, does this make sense? She is from Seoul, Korea. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I don't need any extra information to understand this sentence, to understand what are we talking about, okay? So if it makes sense, then I know that the extra information is always non-defining, right? Now, remember, in non-defining relative clauses, we can use which, but we cannot use that, right? Even though I'm talking about a place, which is technically a thing, I cannot use that. Why? Well, remember, that is only used in defining, defining relative clauses. And because this is non-defining, we cannot use that. We can only use which, or if it's a person, who, okay? Now, let's look at the next one. So again, this girl, she's Ashley's friend that is studying abroad right now. So this is the relative clause, but is it defining or non-defining? If you said defining, you are correct. Now again, I'm going to cover this information, and we're going to say this. She's Ashley's friend, okay? Well, she has a lot of friends. She has many friends. So in this context, I'm like, yeah, but which friend? So this information is defining, well, specifically, out of all of Ashley's friend, which friend is she? I need more specific information. Can you define which friend? So this information is defining her, and that's defining relative clause. So she's Ashley's friend that is studying abroad right now. That's a defining relative clause. And notice we don't have a comma, because we do not use the comma with defining relative clauses. But let's think about another thing. We can also use who, right? Because that is for defining relative clauses, and this is defining, so that's OK. But I can also also use who because I'm talking about a person. So remember, defining relative clauses, I can use who or that for people, or even which, if I'm talking about a thing. Good. So I hope this was helpful in understanding how we use these relative clauses, and what the difference is between the defining and the non-defining relative clause. So good luck, and thanks for watching, guys. Bye. A. Do these sentences contain defining, the or non-defining, and the clauses? Add commas to the non-defining clauses, then compare with the partner. 1. A stunt person is someone who stands in for an actor during danger scenes. Danger scenes. So look at the picture here. You see what? This is a stunt person. So... Here we have the cameraman, and they're shooting. They're shooting a scene. It's a very dangerous scene. The car is going to turn upside down. And of course, the actor can do this dangerous action. So a stunt person does it all the time. So A, a stunt person is someone who stands in for an actor during danger scenes. So this is of course the defining clause. Two, a computer graphics supervisor. A computer graphics supervisor who needs advanced technical knowledge often spends millions of dollars on computer graphics. This is of course non-defining. So we're gonna have here a computer, a computer graphics supervisor, comma, comma, who, comma, who needs, who needs advanced technical knowledge, comma, often spends millions of dollars on computer graphics. So number two, non-defining. Three, a stage hand. A stage hand is a person who moves the sets on stage in a theater, produ in a theater production. So this is, of course, defining. Four, 
a movie producer, comma, who controls the, the budget, the budget, comma, decides how money will be spent. So a movie producer, comma, who controls the budget, American budget, British budget, comma, decides, decides how money will be spent. This is, of course, ND, non-defining. B. Add the non-defining relative clauses in, pres in parentheses to the sentences. So here, we're going to have four sentences, and we need to add the non-defining relative clauses to the sentences. A movie extra appears in the background scenes. So I need who never has any lines. I need to put that in the middle. So a movie extra, comma, who never had any lines, comma, appears in the pack in the background scenes. Number two, a newscaster presents the news and introduces videos from reporters who should be trustworthy. A newscaster, comma, who should be trustworthy, comma, presents the news and introduces videos from reporters. 3. A photo editor. A photo editor selects the photos that go into magazines, who is responsible for the quality and content of images. So 3. A photo editor, comma, who is responsible for the quality and content of images, comma, selects the photos that go into magazines. 4. A film composer. A film composer must know music theory and, and interpretation. Who writes the background music for movies? A film composer, comma, who writes the background music for movies, comma, must know music theory and interpretation. C. Write three sentences with relative clauses about jobs you know, compared with a partner. So, this is of course what you're gonna do by yourself. You're gonna write different sentences with relative clauses about jobs. And then you compare it with your friend. Number 12. Reading. Scan the article. Who do you think it was written for? People in the film industry? The general public? Fans of Bollywood movies? Bollywood, not Hollywood. Hollywood in the USA. Bollywood is in India. They're making wonderful movies, wonderful films in India and Bollywood. As you see here in the picture, a lot of Indian people, they are wearing wonderful clothes, different colors. They are singing and dancing. One. A storm forces a plane. A storm forces a plane to make an emergency landing on a deserted island. On a deserted island. Deserted island, isolated island. Island without people. No people. Deserted, no people. The only shelter is a spooky house. The only shelter. Shelter, house. House or a place to sleep in it is a spooky house. Is a frightening house where murderer begins killing passengers. A murderer, a killer. The killer begins killing passengers. So, what do these defenseless people do? Defenseless. Defenseless people who don't have protection. They have, they have a beach party and perform an elaborate song and dance number. So they have a beach party. They have a wonderful party and they started to sing and dance. 
2. This is the world of Bolid. This is paragraph 2. This is the world of Bolid. The scene described above is from the classic Indian film Gomnam, which was made in the 1960s. It's typical of, of the kind of movies that are still made in Indian today. So that was of course a scene of one of the movies in 1960s. Paragraph 3 For as long as Hollywood, Hollywood has existed, there has also been an Indian film industry. Because it's based in Mumbai, formerly Bombay. It's popularly, it's popularly called Bollywood. So in India now they have Bollywood and in the USA we have they have Hollywood. From the words Bombay and Hollywood they make Bollywood. Bombay is a place, famous place in India. While it's as old as Hollywood, it's much bigger. Bollywood currently has the largest movie industry in the world. So Bollywood is bigger than Hollywood. It produces more than 1,100 100 films a year and as many as 20 million people a day pack into movie theaters to see Bollywood films. So here, the number of movies, 1,100 films each year. This is a very big number. It's about four times the number of movies that Hollywood produces every year. Because in Hollywood, they produce about 250 movies every year. But in Bollywood, they make more than 1,000 films. 1,100 films. While there are many types of films made in India, the most popular are the movies made in Bollywood. So there are different movies in India. But the most famous ones are the one in Bollywood. The films which are made in the Hindi language generally deal with Indian history and social issues. So, these Indian films discuss, discuss Indian history and social issues, social topics. The average Bollywood films run about three hours but audiences don't seem to mind the length. So the movie of Bollywood continues for more than three hours. And this of course too long. But this is usual for them. American movies, they continue for two hours. This is the average, but the Indian movies, they continue more than three hours. The stories are melodramatic. Melodramatic, they are full of they are full of passion, full of emotions, strong emotions. Heroes drive around in flashy cars. Heroes drive around in very expensive cars. Actresses twirl around in beautiful costumes. And actresses dance, dance and move in beautiful clothes. And the poor boy always triumphs against the rich villain. The poor boy always achieve his victory against the rich person, against his rich enemy, the rich bad guy. They, they feature many musical numbers, usual love songs. They also feature many musical numbers, usual love songs. And you have different love songs inside the movie. Paragraph 5. Although the films may seem exaggerated to some, this is not how most film goers feel. So these movies and their stars are beloved by audiences throughout Asia, Africa and the Middle East. So the audiences from all over the world, but especially from Asia, Africa and the Middle East, they like the movies of Bollywood a lot. Every South Asian grows up with some kind of connection to Bollywood. North Indian writer Suketu 
Mihata. In certain ways, it's what unites us. This is what makes us united. When we watch a movie and this movie discusses a political issue or a social issue, a human issue for all the people all over the world. Now let's answer the question A. Read the article, find and underline sentence in the article that answers each question below. So here, you will get the answer from the passage. 1. How does Bollywood compare to Hollywood? While, while it's as old as Hollywood, it's much bigger. So Bollywood is much bigger. While Bollywood is as old as Hollywood, it's much bigger. Question number two. How many Bollywood films are made every year? More than 1,100 films a year. Three. How long is a typical Bollywood movie? About three hours. About three hours. How do audiences feel about the stars of Bollywood movies? They are beloved by audiences throughout Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. B. Find these sentences in the article. Decide whether each sentence is the main idea or a supporting idea in the paragraph. Check through the correct boxes. So in this exercise here, you read the sentence, and you think this sentence is main idea or supporting idea. The main idea in a paragraph most of time is the first sentence in a paragraph. The first sentence in a paragraph is the main idea. The main idea, it has all the information in it. The main information. The supporting idea is giving details to the main idea, giving example to the main idea, or elaborating, explaining the main idea. So on. This is the world of Bollywood, paragraph 2. So of course this is main idea. This is the world of Bollywood. Main idea. 2. It produces more than to see Bollywood films, paragraph 3. So this is of course supporting idea, number 2, supporting idea. 3. While there are many made in Bollywood, paragraph 4. Main idea. 4. The average bullet fell. Mind the lens. In paragraph number 4. This is of course supporting idea. 5. Although the film is may seem, film goers feel. Main idea. See group work. Have you ever seen a Bollywood movie? If so, how did you like it? So this is group work between you and your friends. You're going to talk about one of the best movies that you watch in Bollywood movie, at the Bollywood movie. That's the end of unit number 14. Let's have the homework. Number one, keep the words by heart. Listen and repeat. Watch the video of Mr. Kyle Robson, the grammar video. Answer three pages of unit number 14, Interchange 3 workbook, the last three pages. Go to www.cambridge.org slash interchange your case slash. Finally, watch the movie of Cambridge University about Interchange 3 unit 14. Hope you like it, share it, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.